Hello everybody. Today I wanted to talk about an underappreciated portage feature and that is its logging functionality, specifically its e-log functionality. This is the built-in way that portage can log information such as warnings and errors or even specific notes from the developers of e-builds during compile and installation time, that is during emerge time. It can of course be very useful to have logs for a variety of reasons such as referring to the output of emerge commands later or if you have emerge set up as an automated sort of thing. The ability to log the output of the emerge commands, especially in a granular way, is extremely useful. Now by default Portage won't have the e-logging functionality enabled in such a way that you can easily refer to the logs as a user. So what you'll want to do in order to get the full e-log functionality is you'll want to make a couple of modifications to the etsy portage make.conf file and this is my make.conf file here we'll want to add a couple of lines to this file in order to enable elog functionality for portage now the first line that we're going to want to put in here is going to read portage underscore elog underscore classes equals and then a space delimited list of class names now this variable is telling portage elog specifically what kinds of messages that you want to log there are several different classes available for this but for demonstration purposes here i'm going to go with the most common classes and we're going to log class log class warn and class error and then close the string this will make e-logs during build time of any output that falls in the log, warn, or error classes. This includes things like actual compiler errors or compiler warnings. It will take these and put them in a log file for you to easily review later. Now the next line that we want to add is portage underscore e-log underscore system equals, and then in quotation marks, save. What you're saying here is actually save the e-log so that we can refer to them later. With this line in here, anything that is listed in the Portage e-log classes will be written to an e-log and then actually saved in a file for you to refer to later. So with those changes made, we can right quit and be done with it. Now Portage actually stores all of the logs that it makes with e-log in var log portage e-log by default. And you can see there are a few things in here, including these summary dot logs. But an actual portage e-log for a package that's built with emerge will end in just dot log. And the first part of the name will be some information about the package itself. So let's do something to get some output in here. Why don't we do emerge DWM? DWM is the window manager that I'm currently using. And whenever I emerge it, there are a few compiler warnings that will print out. So those should be logged by e-log. So let's go ahead and emerge DWM and get a log file of that. Since this will just reinstall a program that's already on the system, I'm not too worried about doing this. Okay, and we're done. So let's once again list out the var log portage elog directory, and you can see here that we have x11wm dwm dot log. This is an e-log of the important information that printed out during that last build process. It will contain all of the logging, warning, and error messages that were printed out by Emerge when we ran Emerge DWM. Now we can see what's in this file with cat pretty easily. var log portage e-log x11 so and so. And you can see that it's just got a lot of information related to the various e-log classes that we specified in our make.com file. Now this is all well and good for viewing the information that e-log is going to record for you, but there is actually a better way, that is to say a more visually appealing and organized way of looking at this information. The next thing that we are going to do is we're going to use a program called eLogV, which is a program to view and manage your e-log files. Now eLogV is probably not installed by default on your system, so in order to install it you'll want to emerge app portage elog v but i've already got it installed on my system so we're going to go ahead and use it now before we get right to it let's man elog v to see what the program is like you can see here that it says that elog v is an elog viewer and it's based on curses and python meaning that it will run in the terminal just fine and then down here in the rest you can see that it has lots of different navigation and usage commands 
Now, one of the things that's nice about eLogV is that it has the ability to remove selected files, meaning that you can use eLogV not only to visually manage your eLog files a little bit better, but also to trim and remove the ones that you don't need anymore. So let's back out of here and let's run eLogV. All right, and now as you can see, it's found one log, the X11WMDWM-6.1-R1 log, and it was made on this date. It got all that information from the file name. And then down here in the bottom, it has information on what actually is recorded in the log. It says that there was a warning, which is that user patches were applied, because I have a few patches running for DWM. And then it has this information about the prepare and install steps of the eBuild. And then a little note about the configuration information from the developers here. Now this is nice and very useful. You can see how this would be great if you were running like an automated update system and you had dozens of these logs that you needed to go through. Of course, we only have the one here, but eLogV is great for people who are doing their updates in like an unmanaged way and that need to be able to refer to their logs later. It can really speed up the process of reading these kinds of logs. Now, one thing I want to demonstrate here, you'll notice that we just ran the command elogv as a regular user when we started this. So if I try to delete now which according to man page or this help page, as you can see here, we should simply run D and then D again to delete the selected one. We get a trace back for Python that says permission denied. That's just because we ran it as the regular user. So if you intend to actually manage your elog files, you'll want to run sudo elogv. And then we can D, D. And now if we try to run elogv again, you can see that it says there aren't any elog files on var log portage because we deleted it successfully that time. You just need root permissions in order to delete existing elogs. You just aren't going to be able to do that as a regular user unless you have admin permissions as a regular user. All right, and that about does it for this video on elogs and the elogv. Hopefully this was useful to you. Uh, I apologize about not having put out a video last week. Been a little bit busy lately. Hopefully in the near future, I'll be able to go back to regularly uploading at least a couple of videos a week. So I hope you'll join me for that. But anyway, thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.